Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to use the Live Sync feature to update your content from iClone to Omniverse, as well as some tips and tricks for optimal exporting. NVIDIA Omniverse is a powerful multi-GPU real-time simulation and collaboration platform for 3D production pipelines, based on Pixar's Universal Scene Description or USD format and NVIDIA RTX technology. Before you get started, you want to make sure that you have all of the apps installed that we're going to use. If you're not set up yet, please check out our Getting Started tutorial on iClone Connectors, which you can find by following the link in the description. Once you have everything set up, then just launch the drive to create a virtual disk on NVIDIA Nucleus, which will allow us to use the Live Sync function in Omniverse. If you're going to import your assets from iClone, then you want to follow these steps and head to Create. We're going to export objects from iClone according to category. In the Scene Manager, you can see the various items we have in our scene, including avatars and props. There are quite a few props here, so in order to export them all together, we can simply click on the props title itself to select them all, and then go up to select the Export USD icon from the top toolbar. In the default prim field, we're just going to enter Scene, since these props make up our entire scene. Let's choose a real-time render mode, since in this case there is no subsurface scattering or digital human shaders. We're also not going to have any animation in our scene, aside from the robot avatar, so let's just select Current Frame for the range, make sure to include our IBL for consistent lighting, and then Send to Server, as we're going to use the virtual disk in this case. I'm going to keep the default server path here, and it's recommended that you keep the file name and default prim name the same, in order to avoid confusion in your file management. You can then proceed to send that to the server as well. Let's repeat the same process for our robot avatar, this time entering Avatar in the default prim field and selecting the animated range of our project. We don't need to export the IBL again, so we can uncheck that. Again, keep the naming consistent here after you send to server to avoid file name mixups. We can repeat the same process for the camera and the light as well. Make sure that you select the range you want for both of these and remember to keep the naming consistent as well before sending to server. Next, we're going to look at how to enhance the look of the iClone assets in Omniverse. In Omniverse, you can see the files that have been sent from iClone in the content browser. If we double click on the scene file, it will open in the viewport and assign it as our main USD file. Since we want to transfer all of the other scene settings to our project, we can click and drag them to our stage tab. We're using the reference method to bring objects into our scene here, which allows us to update the content via the Live Sync feature. You'll see each item dragged into stage has an arrow icon to the left, which indicates that it's compatible with this feature. It's important to take note of these different methods of import when importing into Omniverse. Let's go to one of our camera views here so we can get a better look at our robot and adjust the IBL dome light. In the light section, if we select visible in primary array, it will show the HDR map. In this case, we're going to change the HDR map by using embedded content from Omniverse. So let's delete the dome light object that we imported and go into our Skies tab in Omniverse to select a bright daylight template. It will show up in your Stage tab under Environment. From there, you can rotate it to get the light coming from different directions. From there, we can play back to get a good preview of the animation that we imported from iClone on our avatar. To make it a bit more dramatic, we can enable the path traced fog. That can be found in the render settings tab in the path tracing section, under which you can find a number of other parameters that allow you to customize the levels and appearance of the fog. Once we've found a level we like, we can then move on to add an FTT bloom effect in order to enhance our emissive light. This can be found in the post-processing section. Sensor aspect ratio and blades can be adjusted to make the effect more subtle. From there, you can play back to see the effect. Next, we're going to take a look at how to update the content we imported in from iClone. Let's start with the avatar's animation. If we select our avatar and stage, we can then go into the Layer tab and activate Live Sync. You'll notice that it's currently off in the top right of our window, so what we need to do is go up and click the Live Sync icon and select Always On with our avatar selected. 
Once we do that, we can head back into iClone and apply another one of those animations from the library to our robot avatar. After we do that, we need to update the avatar, so let's first ensure that we set default prim to the same name as the one in Omniverse, which is Avatar. All the other settings will be the same in this case, so all we need to do is go back and resend to the server. Once that's done, we can play back again in Omniverse to see the updated results. That's all there is to it folks. As you can see, it's super easy and quick to import your iClone assets into Omniverse, including avatars, lighting, cameras, and entire scenes. Stay tuned for more tutorials on Omniverse and iClone Connector, and don't forget to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com for more info on the latest Reillusion developments. I'll see you in the next video.